to uh, introduce our featured presenter today. In my um, lifetime, there are many people that you get to meet and become friends with. And so before I introduce the person who is presenting, I met a person, Donna Troisi, who many of you have met throughout the community, who is instrumental and part of our executive committee for Smile on Seniors. And Donna is a very driven woman and she really cares about the community. And that's actually how I met her the first time. But now she's on to another project and Rabbi Mark Blazer and her have partnered together to create a charter school that will be with values that Jewish families can truly appreciate and feel comfortable sending their children to, but also giving them the great secular education that we want our children to have to grow and thrive. And so as you learn about someone, you learn about the person they're working with, and she's always speaking so highly about this rabbi. And I finally met him. I learned more about what he does and who he is, and which is what he's going to share today. Rabbi Blazer is really behind as a child of the founder of JLTV, but I'm going to share his bio, and, and then I'm going to share the mic with him. So Rabbi Mark Blazer is the president of the Jewish Life Foundation. Its mission is to promote the Jewish culture. The majority of its educational programming airs on Jewish Life Television, which is what we had mentioned, JLTV. It's the only national and international TV network dedicated to uplifting and Jewish values programming. Locally, since people did ask me this, and it was in our email, so Rabbi Blazer pointed that out to me. Locally, you can watch it on channel 325 on DirecTV or 184 on Cox. However, I just want you to know you don't need cable to watch it. It's also on Roku, on Zumo, on another multiple, I'm going to say smart TVs. Now, Rabbi Blazer has served as the spiritual leader of Temple Beth Ami in Santa Clarita, California, since 2007. He's a community leader for more than 20 years. He was the first clergy member on the scene after the North Valley Jewish community shooting in August of 1999. An attack that the perpetrator called a wake-up call to, American, to America to kill Jews. He's the founder of the Albert Einstein Academy, the first K-12 Hebrew charter school in the Western United States. Within three years of opening, it was in the top 1% of high schools in California. It now has schools in California, Ohio, and as we mentioned, coming to Scottsdale this coming year. Rabbi Blazer also serves as a chaplain for the LA County Sheriff's Department. He has served as a chaplain for the California Department of Corrections for eight years. He ministered as the only prison rabbi serving statewide across California. And I can tell you that in Arizona, the state prisons only had 43 Jews at one point two years ago. I promise you California has a lot more. <laughs> Rabbi Blazer studied at Oxford University as a graduate of the University of California, San Diego, received his smicha from the Academy for Jewish Religion in New York. Mark and his wife, Tracy, were married in 1993. They're the proud parents of Rachel, Dina, and Shira. And he continues the legacy of his father, Phil, the founder of JLTV. So if you don't mind giving him a very warm welcome. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. So uh, first of all, I just want to say that it's already been a, an honor to get to know uh, the rabbinic team of Levy and Hani, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, they do amazing things here. So with that that introduction, uh, which was, uh, it's, it's kind of humbling, but to understand, I want to start actually at the end or in the future, which is that I am here primarily in Arizona to help with the development of the charter school, the Hebrew language charter school. So this is going to be the first K through 12 Hebrew language charter school in the state of Arizona. It's going to be one of the only ones west of the Mississippi. There's a few in New York and a few in Florida. And what we really feel is that having this educational offering for our young people here in this valley, it's going to help transform uh, the Jewish community here and strengthen the Jewish community and strengthen the connections between the community and the general community. But also, it's going to help, and we, of course, had no idea four years ago when we started this project, it's going to help us in the new battle, the new front that we have 
in combating anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism, which again is the same thing, but this type of hatred can only be combated really by education and by engagement. We can't uh, just circle the wagons. We also have to open it up and make sure that kids from all backgrounds, so you know, imagine brown kids and black kids, kids from all backgrounds, all countries, learning Hebrew every day, learning about Israel in a positive way every day because it's part of their curriculum. That's what we're talking about. So it's transformative. You'll be seeing a lot about it, hopefully in the coming months. And we're opening in August with the first four grades, maybe five grades, K through four this first year. So that's the future. That's what we're getting to. And my engagement in it is because of my belief and the way I was raised that we have to work with everybody. We have to work across the spectrum in Jewish life, and we have to work with every community in the United States. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our network, about JLTV. And uh, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my father, Phil Blazer, who unfortunately passed four years ago. But my father started off as a media pioneer in L.A., with a Jewish radio program. And then that grew in the 1970s. Do we have any people from LA here? Any escaped LA people? So it started out as a, as a radio show, and then it grew into a newspaper, Israel Today. And then that grew into a television program in the 70s, late 70s, that was on uh, UHF channels, one hour a week on Sundays. And then in 2006, we started JLTV. My father was able to uh, convince DirecTV to carry a 24-7 linear channel. Nobody thought it could be done, and uh, people still don't even believe that it exists. Some people don't know it exists, but the reality is, is that every American television can have a Jewish channel every day. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about it. So... I, I know some of this is really hard to see, so I'm going to just read. This is part of like, if you go on our website, if you learn about JLTV, this is some of the information you're going to have. But it's the only 24-7 English language television network in the world that provides Jewish-inspired programming for everyone, news from Israel. And what's different about our channel from every other channel, why is this channel different from every other channel? Because 24 seven, every day of the week, every hour of the day, there is some programming there that is inspiring and educating, not just the Jewish community, but everybody who has a television. So we estimate that 75 to 80% of our audience on any given day, on any given moment is not Jewish. And so we have a lot of supporters, a lot of people that watch the network who are evangelical, but we also have people from all backgrounds who are watching the network. And of course, what this does is it helps us right from right out of the gate have a way of combating anti-Semitism. And as you see, the, the number of incidents, this is all information from the ADL, from the AJC, the amount of uh, incidents before uh, October 7th. So during the course of the week, we have uh, lots of programs. I'm going to show you some of the programs we have, but uh, every prime time block during the week is kind of devoted to a different uh, type of programming. So depending on the night, we have different prime time themes, and we're going to show you some. I'm going to show you some of the the programs in particular, but some of them are at the bottom here. So you can see one of the shows that we show on Monday is a comedy that stars Zelensky. Some people don't know this, but in Ukraine, he was a actor and comedian for many years. And this show, Servant of the People, is a show where he becomes the president of Ukraine. So this was uh, definitely a situation of, of life imitating art. And so this uh, show, we're the only network in the United States that's showing Servant of the People. And then uh, at the bottom, you can see we're showing uh, a show that a lot of people have seen on Netflix, but we're the only channel that shows it. Every Thursday night is Fauda. And Fauda is uh, a show that unfortunately hits a little too close to home too, because it's about how Israel tries to stop terrorism uh, first by infiltrating um, terrorist cells in uh, the West Bank and Gaza. So the people who conceived it and wrote this were people who actually 
uh, were were operatives in this uh, in in this uh, agency. So Fauda is on on uh, Thursdays, and in addition to that, we have another show that came out of Israel called uh, Prisoners of War. It was only two seasons that they did in Israel, but that show became a, a show here in America called Homeland. But this is the original version of it, the Israeli version of it. And so we're airing that as well as Fauda every Thursday night. And you can see we have a couple of other shows that are pretty exciting. We have documentaries that we have. We have uh, a show that we produced ourselves called Land of Israel that, that uh, stars John Voigt, who's a big supporter of, uh, of Israel. He's also a big supporter of Chabad. And uh, he hosts that show. But you can see at the bottom there, we have a couple of classics. Uh, classics actually make up a really important block of our, of our, uh, of our network. So for those of you, for those of you who can't see, uh, somebody who can see, tell me who those the, those two shows are down there. Because I know. There you go, Jack Benny. Is somebody met somebody? Yeah. The, Jack Benny, a lot of people would get, but Goldberg, less people. That's the original Goldbergs. So what's the only channel in America that you can watch the Goldbergs? JLTV. So we're also, we're also airing some other uh, uh, classic shows, but that's, uh, those are two of our, of our classics blocks. Those are some of our most popular shows, by the way. So this is... Um, some examples of, of the uh, types of shows that we have. So we have the classics. We have a lot of classics. And some of them are, are, are very tangentially Jewish. Even Jack Betty to some extent. But You Bet Your Life, for example, is on. Those are some shows that people really love. But interestingly, one of the shows that's most talked about on our network is we're the only network that's shown this. And we've shown it for years. It'll be unbelievable if I tell you what it is. It's actually this one right here, Soupy Sales. People love that. We took it off for a little bit, and uh, we had ne we never had more letters than that. Uh, no. So some of these shows were written or produced or, or again, were, uh, were, were um, tan like I said, tangentially Jewish. But listen, we have a lot of time that we have to fill, which we're hoping, you know, we'll be able to fill with more programs uh, that are either Jewish or, again, in some cases, from Israel. So we have Krav Maga, for example, which is the Israeli martial arts. So we have that, that we're able to do Bodies in Motion with Gil, you know, Gil Jenklowitz from uh, Hawaii. He's been doing that for years. He's Israeli. And again, it's not necessarily Jewish fitness, but it's part of our fitness block in the morning. Um, and then, of course, we have some, as I told you, found in Prisoners of War. We also have religious and inspirational programming. And we have this show right here called Friends of Chabad, which is a great, great show that we did. Actually, John Voigt was one of the producers of it, where we actually, and it's a great idea, and I think we should be doing more of them. We actually focused on uh, Shluchim, Chabad Shluchim around the world, and the amazing work that they're doing. And going around, and we started it during during a lockdown. We started showing again what is what's going on around the world. It's it's quite amazing, and I wish we I wish we uh, had more more funding and more ability to to focus on this because it's 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 a phenomenal story. We also um, we have a, a production that we financed with uh, and uh, produced with uh, Israel with the Israel government called Explore Israel which has been hosted by um, the previous consul general for Israel, which some of you maybe have seen him or met him. Uh, he just left Hillel Newman, Dr. Newman, but he was the host of the show, uh, but he's now, uh, his posting was done, but he was the same consul general for California in the whole West Coast, really. But he approached us and asked us if he could, uh, we could do a show with them. And we've been doing that for the last also started it during 2020, 2020, we started that. So those are some of the programs that we have. And one of the things that we have every day, Monday through Friday at least, is the ILTV daily news from Israel. So every day we have news from Israel. I was on the phone this morning, we're producing another Israel focused uh, news program, which is going to be uh, done in partnership with the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, JCPA, that's going to be producing a, uh, a weekly update on what's going on in Israel in response to uh, what's going to happen for the, for the rest of our situation with uh, this current situation in Israel. So that's going to be once a week. We also have another really exciting show that's coming on the network that's going to be coming on this year. 
Uh, the pilot was already uh, is already in post production. It's called Generations, and it's a Jewish genealogical show. It's a show where kind of like finding your roots, and they always have some Jewish celebrities on that. But we finished the first episode. This is uh, Cameron Mannheim, the actress, and we did a show with her and her son Milo, and uh, we did a DNA and and historical um, show that, and then we produced that with the Jewish uh, Museum of Heritage in uh, New York. New York City. And so that's a program that we hope will become a regular fixture on the network. So this is uh, some of, you know, people ask how many people watch and how many people are, are tuning in. These are kind of our numbers during the, during the week and in the uh, different time blocks. Um, and so we have, you know, our biggest viewership is obviously during prime time. And, uh, and that's kind of what our viewership is. But um, if you look at the top, and again, it's really small to see, but we're on across the country. And so people who have charter cable or what used to be charter spectrum or Time Warner, we're on there, we're on Comcast. And then three years ago, two and a half years ago, it'll be three years in June, we finally got on Fox Cable, which is here and in Nevada and in even parts of California and Virginia. But the big one, of course, was being on Charter. Now, I mean, on DirecTV. What's, uh, of course, tough is that so many people don't have cable and satellite now. So people are watching on Fire Sticks, on Roku, on Apple TV. There's a lot of different ways to get the network. A lot of people now have a, not, not so much in Arizona, but in other parts of the country have what's called Zumo. They're getting it through Comcast. And we're on channel 515 on Zumo. So all of these different boxes and all these different ways, it's harder now to, just, you know, used to be able to just tell people we're on 184 on Cox or 325 on DirecTV. Now it's very hard, but we're on all these different platforms. Uh, people watch us also through YouTube, and then we stream a lot of stuff on Facebook. We don't stream every day, uh, and we definitely want people to be engaged uh, through our network or through streaming, but we do broadcast some stuff on Facebook. I'll tell you some of the stuff we have. So again, one of the things that we want to remind people is that as we're living in some difficult times, that the network helps connect us. It helps us feel good about our community, obviously we're reporting on some difficult times, but we're also giving people stuff that inspires them and makes them feel good. And when you see these kind of numbers that, you know, one in four Americans have been the target in this last uh, six months of anti-Semitism, it reminds you that uh, this is definitely uh, become critical. It's now, it's now uh, our, our platform and our network and the viewership is up, everything is up. We don't want it to be up for this reason, but it is, it, is, uh, it is a way of connecting. So again, went over some of the, uh, the shows that, that are here. This kind of explains some of the shows that, that we have, but I wanna just focus on, um, I wanna focus on a couple of the shows here. We have a travel show called Airland and Sea that was, uh, it's uh, been focusing on Jewish travel destinations and on destinations where there's Jewish aspects of travel. Uh, that's a show that we produce. And we also produced a few years ago, and it got quite a, quite a lot of uh, uh, interest when it came out. It was a show called The Bubbies Know Best. And the, the Bubbies were, they are, thankfully, uh, three ladies who are all Bubbies, who um, basically were, uh, it was a dating show. And we're just starting the next season is going to be released uh, next month. And so people um, kind of submitted to their dating recommendations. And they, they're amazing. They have amazing personalities, amazing. Uh, one of them uh, right here, SJA, she has a, uh, her TikTok channel. You might have seen her. She's TikTok Bubby is her name. And she's got a following of millions. She's one of the biggest influencers on uh, TikTok. I'm not joking. And she started, uh, she started with us a couple of years ago on Bubbies. And so they ended up getting, that was a, a photo from Access Hollywood, but they got on uh, t television. They got on, uh, they were in some promos with uh, Between the Ferns with Zach Galifianakis. They were on uh, 
they were on so many shows for about a for about a year. But uh, we're hoping that that new season will come out and it'll be another big blockbuster. We also have, by the way, down here too. This is one of the most popular shows that we have, which is one of our exercise shows, which is exercise. It's uh, called Vitality for Life. And it's a, it's a workout show specifically for people who uh, are thinking about their health as seniors. So that's a really special show that we've got too. Friends of Israel there in the middle. Uh, this is another show that's produced with, with uh, John Voigt. It uh, actually focuses on, on uh, leaders in the, in the Christian community who are supporters of Israel. So that's an interesting show where, the, where uh, we focus on some of the supporters of Israel. Now, I'm going to show you two little clips. Um, this is a clip of something that has only just started airing. So you're one of the first groups of people to see this. This is something that we produced an animated, um, some animated content. This is called Rebby Tales, and it's uh, narrated, and the music is by a musician, Rebby Soul. Named, uh, his name is Bruce Berger, and he did... Um, we worked on this project. We've produced these short seven to 10 minute uh, uh, animated Jewish tales. So this one is a little one, little snippet from uh, one called Visit, A Visit to Heaven, which is one of the Baal Shem Tov stories. And I thought that would be a, appropriate to show that today, but this is gonna, let me, so this is a little clip of of uh, something that very few people have seen. So you'll see Rebbe Tales coming up, and you'll get to hear the rest of that tale from the Baal Shem Tov. So we have, uh, it's legends from ancient, from Midrash, from more modern uh, Hasidic tales, but uh, they're, it's called Rebbe Tales. So that's coming out uh, as we finish those episodes. And then I want to show you one thing that came from right here in your own backyard. Last year, we, we uh, taped a beautiful service with one of the local talents here, Todd Herzog, the cancer from Temple Solel. Yeah, that's all you have to see. But so now I want to tell because this is really where I'm going to end and then take questions. But um, this was filmed in the beautiful Sonora Desert, actually about five miles from where we're standing right now at a, uh, a place called Camelot Ranch, which is a really great place where they use horses to help uh, people with with uh, injuries. But um, we filmed it outside. The sound is amazing. And a few years ago, during COVID, we did a, a interesting um, pivot. And I will say this with respect to the, 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 our hosts and to my feeling about this too. I had a really, um, for years, we, we had the discussion about what to do on Shabbos. We, we're on, we have to be on. By law, we have to be on. But the question is, do we do something on Shabbos that's going to be um, providing spirituality, whatever you want to call it. And so during COVID, we had no choice because people couldn't go to shul. And so what we did is we talked to people like Todd. Todd was one of the first people we talked to because we're friends. But we went around the country. We asked great cantors and voices, uh, Craig Taubman from L.A., Josh Nelson from New York. We went around the country and we got these people to um, provide music, video, and then we put together a Shabbat experience that people who were homebound could hear. And it stayed because it became very important. It became popular and it's now part of life. So it is, uh, it is an offering. I don't want to tell people this is what they should do on Shabbos. I'd never tell people that. And I don't, I, I'd much rather people be with other people, but for people who can't, there's now a way to, to listen to, 
to some of the greatest voices in America. And we have so many great Jewish voices. And what the network can do is bring them together and bring the, the country together. And that's, that's what we're doing. But I want to tell you that every part of the country has something to, uh, uh, an important voice on this network. And as I wanted to finish with this, is to remind you that Arizona has a voice, an important part of that too. So I want to thank you for uh, giving me a little time to talk about the network today, but I wanted to, I don't know how we have time for some questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we have our standing show in front of the network. I love it. I love it. TV show all the time, and you know, people who still well, it's remarkable. Yeah. Uh, also, but I want to know if you could go in this channel in Minnesota. Okay. First of all, it's very important that you do get the channel in Minnesota. Why? Because my father, Phil, was from Minnesota, so he made sure that the network was, oh, yeah. So, no. So, my family are the Lermans and the Mass Bombs and a few other families. Some of them will live here. Yeah, that's our that's our family. So there you go, right there. But Minnesota is a very important part. And we're actually talking about going back to Minnesota to record some of the great Jewish voices in, in the Twin Cities. My next stop, though, is actually Nashville. Next month, I'm going to be going to Nashville to record for Music City some, some uh, sounds. Well, we also did Houston. We did Houston uh, down in Texas. So Minnesota is definitely on the agenda. And we're on in Minnesota, I promise you. Yeah, yeah. So if you have chart, I don't know what what cable do you have in Minnesota? You don't know? Okay, well, it's 100% there. And direct TV, by the way, is national. So wherever you go, if you, I was watching in my hotel room the other night, just to, I didn't have a lot of time, but I was in the hotel and it was on, it was on in my hotel. So, yes. Yes. And yeah, so so Comcast, uh, we're on in limited markets in Comcast, and the reason why Comcast has been a little bit harder for us to, to work with is because they've been trying to rule, they've been rolling out this new um, this new system as well, which is the Zumo. I don't know if you've seen it, it's X-U-M-O, and there's Fubo and Zumo and Roku and all these silly names, but Zumo is what they're trying to use now uh, on their platform. So we're on channel 515 on the Zumo. It's a, it's a, it's their streaming, but you don't have to have the box for Zumo either. Some of the TVs are now loaded. It's, I know it's very confusing. I, I don't know what to say. I'm not going to make any apologies for the systems we have now, but it's very confusing because then you have smart TVs and some TVs have the channels loaded in already. But if you have Zumo on your TV, you can easily get it. But uh, it kind of depends on what you're, unfortunately now, what TV you have. Yes. Yeah, so so Hebrew is a, a required language of the charter school. Um, but you're not allowed to teach religion because it's state funding, right? And so we can't do that, which is fine. You know, when people Listen, for, for years, we ran a school out of uh, a campus in Beverly Hills. It was a reform synagogue, a large reform synagogue, Temple Emmanuel. And unfortunately, they had to sell the building that we were at. But Temple Emmanuel couldn't get the program, the after school program ready. So guess what? The Flitville Chabad around the corner said, we'll do it. And they did it. And so for years, even though we had the school at the reform synagogue, the Chabad did the after school uh, Judaic program. He said, whoever wants to do it. Um, whoever wants to put together a program, multiple people want to do the program for Judaic, that's whoever wants to take part in it. But we can't teach religion during the day, which is great because then I don't, I don't get held responsible. I used to be a day school educator, by the way. That was not in my bio, but I spent uh, my first years out of rabbinical school as a day school uh, rabbi. And I, I do not want to be responsible for halakha in the classroom or in the building, please. I, I do not ask me to do that. So I don't have to. It's not immersion. It's not an immersion process. It's not, immersion would be that every uh, class is taught in, in the Hebrew language. It's not. Um, there is one school in the country that's doing true Hebrew immersion, but um, it's it's a very difficult thing to uh, to do uh, in any language, but especially in Hebrew. I, it, it really is. There's not enough. There's not enough Israeli parents that want it. So 
uh, it's tough. Any other questions? No. Yeah. 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 So it's starting with kindergarten through fourth grade this year. But if we have parents, we're, we're a license, we're chartered for K through 12. So at any moment, if we have the high school demand, middle school demand, we can open it up tomorrow. So if we had 20, 30 kids that were in seventh grade that said, we want to start, you know, with a parent, probably not the kids, but the parents would come to us and say, we want the school, it would be open tomorrow, those grades. But uh, we're just down the road. Our, our campus is going to be at, uh, we just um, moved when we're getting the, the building ready. It's right down the road. Um, it's right off of McDonald and, and uh, about Hayden. So it's right off the freeway. It's not far off the freeway. So people from around the valley can make it there. But it's a really nice building. It's right by Saguaro High School, for those who are familiar with that. There you go. The fighting, what are the saguaro cacti? cacti? Oh, saber, yes, that's good. All right. right there, you're right across the street. Right, that's where Temple Temple of Beth Ahmed is. That building. That's it, yeah. Yes, of course. Well. Yes, that's a great question. I wish I had said that. It is it's closed captioned. Absolutely. Do we have children what? Children for children's programming? Yes. Children, yes, especially Sunday mornings. That's our, our block. I, I didn't show our grid because it's, you would never be able to see it. I couldn't see it staying right here. But it's, uh, yeah, Sunday mornings are our big children's block. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's, I would say the problem is, is that we're programming for everybody. And our audience is definitely a little bit older. They're, they're older than you. So don't worry about it. You're not going to worry about 